Okay, this video is meant to demonstrate how to draw a cyclohexane chair and how to um, illustrate the axial and equatorial positions and what happens to these positions when you flip the ring to the different conformation. So let's start <clears throat> by drawing a cyclohexane chair. Here's how I tend to do it. I tend to draw a little angle, triangle, up on this side, two straight lines coming off of that, and an angled triangle on the other side. It's not perfect, but it's it's really functional and it's really easy to do. Okay, so really what we can imagine is this line right here demonstrates the the plane of the ring. And we can have substituents on opposite sides of that plane in trans or on the same side in cis. Okay, now this six-membered ring describes where the six carbons are in the cyclohexane. But what about the substituents off of each carbon? Each carbon has two substituents, and those substituents are either in the axial or equatorial position. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first draw all the axial positions for the cyclohexane. And where I start is I usually start on the top here. I say here's the top part of the ring, and all I know is that at this carbon, the axial position is going to go straight up. So I'll put axial positions in red. And what else? I, by establishing this first axial position is going up, I've really determined where all the other axial positions have to be on this ring. They tend to alternate sides of the, of the cyclohexane. So if I know on the top here the axial is going up, then at the next carbon the axial must be going down, the next one it goes up, the next one down, the next one up, and this one down. And so I've described all the axial positions on the cyclohexane. They have to alternate up and down. And if you notice, sort of the way I've drawn the cyclohexane chair is that, you know, the top of the chair where your head would be, the axial position goes up on your head. And at the bottom of the chair where your feet would be, the axial position goes down. So if you can rem remember either one of those, then also knowing that they alternate sides of the ring, you can establish all the axial positions in the cyclohexane. Now I'm going to use green here to demonstrate the equatorial positions and once you have the axial positions set up these are easy to fill in. Remember each carbon in the cyclohexane has an axial and an equatorial position. If the axial is going up then the equatorial is going down Remember, equatorial positions are more in the plane of the ring, so they don't go straight down. They sort of go a little bit down. So here's an uh, equatorial down position. The next one must be equatorial going up. Equatorial down. Equatorial up. Equatorial down. Equatorial up. Okay. So what I've got here is a good chair confirmation stable conformation of cyclohexane with the axial positions and the equatorial positions going in the right direction at the right place. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what I also need to demonstrate is that this chair can flip. Okay. I just chose when I drew the cyclohexane here to have the head of the chair on the left side, but this ring can easily flip to a different conformation where the head is on the right side. And I'll just draw this cyclohexane chair the opposite. Sort of like I've just picked up the chair and turned it around. So my head's on the right, the feet are on the left. Okay? And remembering what I know about axial and equatorial, I can still label axial and equatorial positions here. Here's my head. Axial has to go up. So then we alternate axial positions and that designates where the equatorial positions are going to be. Okay. 
Now, let's say I didn't have just plain cyclohexane, but I had a substituted cyclohexane. Let's say I had some bulky substituent on this carbon, and in this cyclohexane it happened to be in the axial up position on that carbon. Now, how do I figure out where this bulky substituent is going to be when the chair flips? Okay. Well, the easy rule is that it stays on the same side of the ring. It just moves from axial to equatorial or equatorial to axial position. So if I have a bulky substituent that's axial up, it's going to remain up when the ring flips, but it will move to an equatorial position. And really for this, it doesn't matter in which carbon I put it, as long as I put it in the up equatorial position. Okay. Let's put it right here. That's the ring flip. Now, which of these molecules would be more stable with this bulky substituent on the carbon? Well, it tends to be the equatorial positions provide less steric hindrance for bulky substituents. Therefore, we would choose this conformation of this sub substituted cyclohexane ring as being more stable and a little more prevalent, right? So we might tend to draw this arrow a little more strongly than the back arrow.